Welcome to the first video showing battle in Victory and Glory Napoleon. So today we're going to talk about uh, complex battles. And so we've got a nice large army here, uh, Napoleon's army. And he has marched from the coast all the way down into Bavaria uh, in 1805. And he's heading toward Vienna. Uh, the Austrians have moved two sizable armies uh, in his path. In 1805, uh, 20 tends to be the largest army you can have. So the Austrians uh, are there and will march Napoleon's army into the region and start a major battle. So this is the major battle of Aspern. And as you can see, the Austrians have deployed uh, their forces on their battle line. You can have... Uh, a maximum of four units in each of these battle areas uh, left flank right flank and center and the Austrians have set up some nice combined arms groups uh, infantry artillery and cavalry in every one of these groups and that gives them the maximum combined arms bonus uh, other bonuses for combat include uh, different unit types attacking uh, unit types that they have an advantage over for example cavalry against artillery is an advantage um, another modifier is uh, based on the, the relative quality of the two commanders. So the Austrian commander is uh, Archduke Charles, and he's got an, a command rating of 6 versus Napoleon's command rating of 12. So the French are going to have a, a bonus. Um, Alright, so we'll start to put our troops on our battle line and deploy them. And we'll get some uh, guard units, heavy artillery... Dragoons and uh, probably the Cuirassier. All right, so on the next group, we will put infantry, heavy cavalry, heavy artillery, and medium cavalry. And on the right flank, we'll go with light artillery. Uh, we're gonna probably use the uh, the tactic of uh, long range bombardment. This will be our holding uh, flank, and we'll attack with these two flanks. Um, light cavalry and infantry will round it out. Now before we start, uh, we also have a battle card. We happen to have a Napoleon's Genius battle card. And this allows us to choose one of four bonuses. Uh, the best bonus that we have, because we have a good number of artillery units, is the Grand Battery. So that will give us two free attacks, uh, or one free attack for each artillery unit before the battle begins. So we'll choose that. There's what it tells us about the, uh, the free attacks. And we're ready to start the battle. So we'll hit start. And this tells us that it's bad news for the enemy. Each one of our frontline artillery units gets an attack. So there's lots of reminders. You can turn those off, but the reminders help you understand what's going on when you're learning the game. So we'll start with uh, some long-range bombardment. When you select on a unit and then hover over a target, you can see some basic information of what modifiers are, are taking place. So we have uh, three pluses for the difference in quality of our commander. Uh, we have two minuses for uh, defender support. He has good support uh, adjacent to this artillery unit. And one minus for not being adjacent. So artillery at long range can still fire, but they're not quite as effective. So we'll go ahead and fire. And the no effect fire our second unit. This time we disrupted them. So disrupted units can't move. Uh, they also have uh, a negative combat modifier when they attack and when they defend. Okay, uh, so these artillery units we're going to move up since these areas are going to be our main attack areas. And now the battle begins. Um, we have won uh, the initiative. Uh, after every movement, uh, the computer will automatically decide which side in the battle wins initiative and gets to move the next unit. So, um, and again, that's uh, modified heavily by the, the relative command ratings of, of the leaders. So as you can see, there's a lot of benefits to having a superior commander, as you would expect. Um, in a combat system like this, the idea is to uh, reward... Uh, historical be uh, benefits as well as uh, good decisions by the players that fit within that context. So for example, we, we leaving these artillery units here would be 
uh, highly dangerous. We want to get some units up there to support them uh, so that they're not standing there by themselves. So you can see that now this artillery unit has support. Two good units of different types, so this is a combined arms bonus as well as a support bonus. And the same thing here. We definitely want to get some units up there before the enemy attacks. So we've been fortunate so far and had four um, units move up. Uh, you only have a certain number of activations during every round of battle. And uh, we started with a higher number, again, based on the relative command ratings. That's how many activations that each side will have in every round of battle. Okay, we're almost ready to launch some attacks here. Now that we have all of our troops up, cavalry can actually use uh, move twice for every activation. And artillery uh, can, can usually only move one, but these two units have moved up, so they're ready to fire. So we'll start here and have this artillery unit fire into um, this cavalry unit. Let's see if we can disrupt them. And we did. So they're disrupted and now more uh, susceptible to attack by our heavy cavalry. And we will launch that attack. Great, great result. So we routed uh, this unit. It's not been destroyed or eliminated, but it is now routed and out of the battle. Um, there is the possibility of rallying routed units between rounds of combat, but it costs uh, the commander two co uh, quality points for the next round for every attempt. You can make two attempts per turn. So the risk for this commander is he's already outmatched, and if he tries to rally this unit later, um, he'll, his rating would drop to four. Okay, so now we will have our cavalry assault this um, heavy artillery unit. And didn't, didn't have any effect. Now the Austrians are countercharging here with their cavalry, firing with their artillery. Great, no, no effect. And they, you saw they also moved up a unit from their reserve to fill in the battle line. So instead of attacking a long line, they can bring in reserves to keep the line strong. Uh, but that does use up some of their activations. Okay, going to the left flank, we're now going to um, launch an artillery barrage on the cavalry unit that's already attacked, and we actually eliminated him. So we did enough damage to actually destroy that unit, and it's out of the game um, permanently. Okay, so now our cavalry can uh, charge their... I think we'll use our crossier to charge their artillery. <laughs> Since he's only got three units here instead of four, the support bonus for defense is slightly lower. And he's disrupted, so we'll follow up with another cavalry charge. And we overran that artillery unit. Well, they bring up more reserves. And as you can see, their reserve uh, troops are being slowly depleted. Battles will last anywhere from three to five turns before either side can retreat. And... Um, once you're allowed to retreat, you can do so. Um, there is pursuit after battle, but you can offset the pursuit damage by having uh, cavalry units that have not been disrupted or routed, and they can be used to block the enemy's pursuit. However, if you're if you're any one of these three battle line areas is empty before you retreat, your line is broken, and the enemy gets a bonus in their pursuit. So it's much more effective. So really what you're trying to accomplish here in every battle is to eliminate all the units in any one of these uh, flanks or center. And that would mean a catastrophic defeat for the enemy and his line broken. Okay, we're going to finish our attacks for this round. Finish our artillery barrage. He's feeding in more troops. Okay, no result. We've got two more activations, so we'll bring some troops up from reserve so that if we do take losses, we can fill those in. And his grenadiers attacked our infantry and were disrupted. You can also be disrupted when you're attacking. Uh, infantry and cavalry can. Artillery doesn't get disrupted when they attack. So every unit type has slightly different uh, attack and defense abilities. Alright. Ah! So that's the end of the first round of combat. Um, we can hit uh, fight next round to start the second round. We have no units that are disrupted, which is great. The enemy has several. Those, some of these can be rallied, uh, and again, based on the quality of their commander, that's, that determines uh, how likely it is that that will happen. 
So we'll hit next round and see. Okay, this unit's rallied. And really that's the only one. So that's good news for us. We've got still some units that are susceptible to attack here. Okay, we've got initiative, so we'll launch our first attack. And I think what we're going to do here is attack this unit. Um, it's probably their, their best unit. It's a, a three-rated heavy artillery unit. So we definitely want to get that unit out of the line, and that will make the entire defense more susceptible to our attacks later. So we'll start with a barrage. And we disrupted them, which is great. It means they're more susceptible to this charge. And the charge routes them, so they've retreated off the line, and they're out of the battle. So now the bonuses for this area's defense are much uh, less than had, had they had four units, and uh, including cavalry and artillery. So now we've got only three infantry units, and uh, two of them are disrupted, and uh, I'm, I'm sure that they'll fill in with some of their reserve units, but for now they're much more susceptible. So what we're going to do is have our cavalry charge these grenadiers, and try and force them into square. We may get lucky and break the square before the attack uh, is finished, but um, hopefully we at least form them, for, force them into square. And actually they didn't form square, they were disrupted, so there's a, a less uh, good chance that they'll be able to form square when they're disrupted. We were actually able to... Oh, lots of attacks from the Austrians. We were actually able to overrun that infantry unit and eliminate them with our Dragoons before they were even able to form square. Okay, um, this infantry unit will fire on this disrupted infantry. And they routed them. Great, having some good success here. And Okay, so uh, left flank attacks. We will launch an artillery barrage on their um, artillery unit, disrupting them. Charge with our cavalry. Great. Again, well, he's filled in <laughs> before we could do anything. He filled in his line, but now, as you can see, it's all infantry, so that's less um, less support. Well, no. He did form square. Our dragoons attack, and they are disrupted and and, and, uh, and, and repulsed. So this uh, unit of dragoons is disrupted and tired because they've already attacked. That's why he's he's grayed out. He can't attack again. But now this infantry unit is stuck in square, and he's a much better target for artillery or other infantry units. So we're going to have our, our infantry uh, attack them. Um, over time, these units are very susceptible, but on any one given attack, they may or may not be uh, defeated. So that was an unsuccessful attack. And we've got four activations left. We'll, um, I guess, bombard the artillery over here. That, great, worked. So we eliminated that unit, and that's, again, a problem for him. Later in the battle, we may launch this group forward to pin these units so that they can't be used to reinforce into the center. Okay, uh, we've got two activations left. I guess we'll move the cavalry up, and they're filling in their line, infantry, and uh, I guess we'll pass on that one. Okay, so he's filled in, and he's now, his entire reserve is empty. Okay, the end of that round of combat. Now they've got, their entire reserve is committed to the line, and if we can uh, bash them good, we might be able to break them before the, they're able to retreat. Okay, we'll fight the next round, Let's see what happens. Rally, rally. And the Austrians aren't rallying. That's good. Okay, so now it's our turn to attack. We've got this unit in square. We're going to fire artillery on them. Close range. That should, and it does. It absolutely devastates them, and their their squares break, and they're destroyed. Okay, uh, we'll force this unit into square. And as you can see, that now usually if they had a cavalry unit here, they could counter charge my disrupted and tired cavalry and, and probably win but since they have no cavalry and no artillery supporting these infantry units they're really susceptible to being forced into square or maybe even overrun by our cavalry just the threat of it oh, there and we overran that disrupted infantry unit so the threat of our cavalry here keeps them f into square and makes them much more uh, susceptible to our attacks our guards aren't really w living up to their reputation today. They have two attacks in a row on squares failed. 
Okay, so um, same over here. Um, I think we'll probably want to eliminate this artillery unit to help our cause. So we'll bombard it first. Yep, that was enough. So the heavy artillery blasted the uh, light artillery and drove them off and def actually destroyed enough guns that they're eliminated. And we will, uh, I think with the Dragoons, charge them, force them into square. Disrupted them as well. And we are as well. Cavalry tends to be disrupted quite a bit when it engages in combat, but they rally quicker than other unit types. Alright, our heavy cavalry will do the same here. And then broke their square and wiped them out. Okay, so they've they've reinforced from their their uh, left flank over to their center. Uh, so now we're going to probably want to move troops forward to pin these units here so they can't continue to do that. Uh, we've got five activations left, so we will move forward. Artillery. Okay, and we want to get some reinforcements up here just so in case they break this we don't lose the battle. We want to keep that, uh, as long as we have units in this whole area, uh, they can't break our line. Alright, we have one attack left. We'll take our disrupted infantry and attack their disrupted unit square. Okay, no effect. They're firing with their units in square. Obviously, when you're in square, your your attacks are much less. Oh, he's tried to rally. He knows he's desperate, so he's tried to rally twice and failed. So now his command rating is down to two for the next round. So that's really not good for him. Uh, very, very bad news. We're going to, uh, well, not try to rally this unit because we don't need it. We still have reserves, um, and we'll fight the next round. Hopefully, uh, rally some of these disrupted cavalry units. Really very solid. Excellent. So again, the, having a high command rating has given us a lot of benefits. So strategically, you definitely want to, as the player, uh, use Napoleon as much as you can um, and only rely on your better sub-commanders to lead other armies. If you, uh, if you have a lower rated general who's forced into a battle uh, somewhere uh, you know, strategically away from Napoleon, that's where you're going to start taking heavy losses and um, you know, lose battles. Okay, so let's see if we can break the line here. Uh, artillery firing here on the enemy square. Route him. And we'll have this unit charge him. Oh, I can't believe that didn't work. Okay, Dragoons follow up. Forces the enemy into square. And routes him. Great, so now the enemy line is broken and we've won the battle. And now we go to the pursuit uh, sub sub screen, and we have five cavalry units that were not disrupted. So this unit here isn't doesn't get to take part in the uh, pursuit because it's disrupted. Um, and the enemy, even though they had good cavalry units, because their line was broken, they they fled and are not helping hold off our attack. So our our pursuit is going to be really deadly. Um, Let's see what the result is. So we, we, we've eliminated seven units in this pursuit. That's that's crushing. So now these all these units are, are lost in the pursuit. Uh, and to add insult to injury, it looks like Archduke Charles was killed uh, trying to escape uh, from the battle, and they've lost him as well. And he's one of the better Austrian generals, so that's not good news for the Austrians right off the bat here. Okay, after the battle week, you can get promotions. So this Dragoon unit was promoted. Uh, this artillery unit was promoted, and uh, this artillery unit was promoted. And this is the battle summary, which says we won a crushing victory at Aspern, which we did. Uh, these were the Austrian losses, including the pursuit, a general, all these infantry, cavalry, and artillery units lost. So we, we took no casualties. Um, this, this was a, a very lopsided victory and shows... Uh, the, the power of a good, powerful combined arms attack with good command and good tactics. Now we leave the battle screen 
and the impact happens now on the strategy screen where there's only five surviving units in this army and we get a bonus card, an event card for winning the battle and the enemy, uh, other his supporting army retreats as well. So they're joining their Russian um, their Russian uh, allies here. So this Russian army has marched in from Russia and the Austrians will, will uh, combine with it and then counterattack uh, next turn to try and take their capital back. Okay, and we'll see that on the next video.